Welcome back to Washington Watch. I'm Tony Perkins, your host. Glad that you are with us. The website, TonyPerkins.com. If you're on Parlor, it's uh, at T. Perkins. All right, we were just uh, discussing, uh, you know, the events of yesterday and what it looked like on uh, Capitol Hill. Um, joining me now to, to talk more about this is the executive vice president of the Family Research Council, retired Lieutenant General Jerry Boykin. He served 36 and a half years in the United States Army, his last four years serving as Deputy Undersecretary of Defense for Intelligence. Uh, General, welcome to the program. Thank you, Tony. I, um, it, it's been interesting in the last 24 hours. You know, I put out a statement yesterday. I was at the actually meeting with the Secretary of State at the State Department when uh, the, um, the violence at the Capitol broke out. And as I said, we don't know who all was behind it. We just know that it happened. And I just said that, the, that violent, lawless actions that took place at the Capitol against Congress and Capitol Police, they're wrong and they're dangerous for our republic. Lawlessness is not the way, and such actions make it difficult for law-abiding Americans to fight the good fight. It's been interesting to see the reaction. I know there's a lot of pent-up frustration because, you know, we've talked about it clear manipulation in this last election. No one trusts the, con- the outcome of it. But we cannot uphold law and order through lawlessness. No. No, Tony, you're right. And, uh, look, yesterday was uh, a really sad day for me. Um, 36 years in supporting and defending the Constitution and and then to see that happen, you know, I, I spent a lot of time in Latin America, and one of the countries that I, I really uh, came to appreciate very much was Colombia, believe it or not, mm-hmm. with the drug cartels and all. But I, I really came to appreciate the society and, uh, and, and, and even their government, you know. It, it, there's corruption all over South America, but uh, now we can say the same thing about America. But in 1985, a group of people broke into the Palace of Justice, which is the Supreme Court down there, and took it over and took hostages and tore things up. And when I watched that yesterday... That's all I could think about was what I'd seen in Colombia. That's what it reminded me of was a third world country. Look, the, it's understandable that people are upset. People have pent up anger because I do too. I don't believe that, that, that the election was fair and free. I think that there was shenanigans going on there. But, but nothing justifies killing four people and tearing up the, the Senate, the heart of our government, I mean, the, uh, the capital, the heart of our government, the very heartbeat of our government, where the people that we elect to go to Washington are, are, are trying to do their business. You may not agree with what they're doing, but for us to, to let that violence get so out of control that we're, we're hurting people, we're killing people, we're we're destroying the property that belongs to all the people, all the people in America. Uh, it's a sad day for me, and I, I've been so critical of Black Lives Matter and Antifa and the violence that have, was left unchecked. And, uh, and now I'm embarrassed because it's, it, it's Theoretically, it's it's the people that call themselves patriots that are out there doing this, and I understand their frustrations. I'm frustrated, but you can't. We're a nation of laws. Yeah. Now, again, we don't know who actually did this. Whether they were, I and mean, we know there were hundreds of thousands of uh, of peaceful protesters. In fact, I've spoken to people who were there. Uh, we just heard from one. Um, or actually, I heard from a couple, but most were there peacefully protesting. They Tony, were, I saw thousands of them yesterday. Just yeah. driving out of the city yesterday, there was not one person that I saw on those streets with waving Trump flags and wearing MAGA hats. 
that in any way was doing anything untoward, anything threatening. They were there because they are frustrated and they wanted to be heard. But breaking into the Capitol and destroying property in the Capitol and, and the violence that was committed against those police officers, that's not right. No, and whether it was some that instigated this or whoever did it, I mean, we, we will know there have been many arrests that have been made. But here's the bottom line. As I said earlier, we cannot uphold law and order through lawlessness. No. And, and, and what we're doing, what actually happened yesterday set us back in terms of trying to get to the underlying issues of the voter fraud. And I have a lot of people say, what are we going to do about this? What are we going to do? How are we going to fix this? Well, that's actually, we talked about that earlier uh, with Ken Blackwell about what the states need to be doing. But what was happening yesterday, although it was a, 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 a process, perfunctory process of them receiving the electoral votes, but they were objecting to them. And then they were going back to their chambers and they were arguing or at least presenting their arguments as to why they should not accept them. So that was a part of exposing right. the problems in these states, but that was short-circuited by those that that stormed the uh, the capital again whoever they were so i'm just i'm just saying i know folks are are angry they're frustrated but this is not america are you frustrated are uh, you angry uh, i am frustrated i am angry but i there's there's a couple of ways we can channel our we all are. we can channel our anger in a few different ways number one we can allow our anger to overcome us and frustrate us to the point we throw in the towel and walk away and say we quit that's one way Another way is to, uh, to be overcome by our frustration and anger and, and, and engage in the same tactics that the world would engage in. It was what we saw yesterday at the Capitol. Or there's a third way. And that is, first off, as believers, we need to be praying. We need to be interceding. And then we need to take action. I, and people say, well, we've been taking action. We voted. Look, I understand that. I've been in this process for over 25 years. Have I won every time? No, I'm still fighting some of the same battles, and I know that it is, it is frustrating. But part of that is being anchored in the fact that this is what God has called us to do, to be salt and light. And it's not going to be easy. God, he didn't say this was a picnic. Jesus said, deny yourself, take up your cross, and follow me. That's what it means to be a witness for Christ and to, to shine a light in the darkness. It's not going to be easy. We can't take the easy route because if we do, we will never gain the actual goal that we want to reach. Because if, if you take the destructive route to try to get to the justice that we want, we will have destroyed justice in the process. Yeah, one of the things that, uh, that strikes me, Tony, and I know it, it does you, and this is, I think, one of the things that's so frustrating to a lot of people is the same people that are the loudest voices condemning uh, what happened yesterday at the Capitol were the people that sit on the sidelines and said absolutely nothing when uh, Antifa and Black Lives Matter was destroying right. our cities. And that's another frustration that's added. But n in no way, in no way is there a justification for us to be going in and taking on police officers that were just doing their jobs. And 14 police were hurt there yesterday, in addition to four people dying. 14 police officers that were just there doing their jobs. That's our sons and daughters. That's our brothers and sisters. And it's wrong. And we're the ones perpetrating that. I don't know who the rabble rousers were, and I know there had to be some there. There always are. There are yeah. professional yeah. rioters. Right. I know. And, and but again, I, I, we're speaking to, to uh, our, our folks. Yeah. We're speaking to, to believers who are, are, are angry and frustrated with what they see happening in this country, that they're losing the, uh, you know, the values we care about. They're being lost, and their votes are not being counted. But believe me, I understand that frustration. What I'm saying is that, number one, we can't give up. Yes. We can't right. give up. No. In no, fact, no, we, we're anyway. called to, con to, to stand. I mean, that's the way I close this program every day, because that's what Scripture says. Having done all, we're to stand. But we also can't engage with the weapons. Our, our weapons of warfare are not carnal. Now, I don't want to be so, spirit, so, so heavenly minded I'm of no earthly good, 
Yeah. But we have to realize that there are spiritual forces at play here in this country, and we saw them here in our nation's capital this week. And it began, I believe, with the opening prayer of the 117th Congress. Oh, absolutely. And, and I think that invokes and invites uh, this, uh, this type of activity, this, uh, the, the spiritual warfare that manifests itself from time to time. Folks, our nation is in trouble. We can't fix it by engaging in the same type of behavior that Black Lives Matter or Antifa. And again, you know, I want to be very clear because I know people have kind of misconstrued what I said in yesterday's program. I'm not painting everyone that was here with the broad brush. I'm saying there are those who did this. That should be denounced. Those who came here and peacefully protested, they were, exor- they were exercising I was right. in light. I was in, encouraged by the number of people they showed up here to let their voices be heard. I was encouraged by that, and yeah. it was peaceful. Right. And, 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 and even one of the commentators of some program I was listening to said, these kinds of things are always peaceful right. because these people Right, these are the people. That's right. Right. So whether some, someone took advantage of that or they're there, there are some on the fringes of that support that, you know, did this, it does not matter. We cannot condone it. It is wrong. Right. It is harmful to the republic, to the cause, and it is inconsistent with a biblical view of our responsibility as Remember citizens. that the First Amendment says, go back and read it for, for people that aren't sure what it says, but it, it ends with, and the right of the people peaceably right. to assemble and to petition their government for the redress of grievances. Right. That's what it started with yesterday. Which and, is right. and I was right there with them. I mean, I wasn't out on the street with them, but I was with them in terms of Absolutely. understanding why they were there and, and wanting, just, just wanting to see more. Right. But then when Engagement. it turned violent. Right. And then we've had some people that say, well, you know, that's what the founders did. No, our founders no, did not did do that. Not. That that was not the American Revolution. That was the French Revolution. French Revolution. The that's American right. the Revolution. The that's right. That did not happen in the American Revolution. I, 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 before we run out of time, I just as we as we look uh, for the way forward, I, I, I actually thought of this this morning. It came to me as we were in chapel service. We had chapel service here at FRC. Yeah. It was a quote from the U.S. Senate Chaplain Peter Marshall back in January thirteenth, nineteen forty-seven. Cool. He said this: "The choice before us is plain: Christ or chaos, yeah. conviction or compromise, discipline." or disintegration. He said, I'm rather tired of hearing about our rights. The time is come to hear about our responsibilities. America's future depends upon her accepting and demonstrating God's government, end quote. We have to exercise it. How do we, how do we compete with lawlessness? We uphold the law. And when there are infringements and when we feel blocked and we feel that those things that have been done are wrong, we still have to to contend within the confines of the law to correct them and, and make it right. But I, to be anchored in these difficult times, we as followers of Jesus Christ need to be immersed in the Word of God, spending time in His presence, from which we will gain the hope, the courage, and the conviction to continue to stand in an increasingly hostile culture. We will never win if we give in to the ways of the world. And let me just say one final thing. I condemn absolutely no one that was at that rally yesterday that remained peaceful. I condemn everybody that went inside the Capitol and took place and took took part in the violence that occurred in there yesterday because that was wrong, and it is it, it it is not only a breach of the Capitol but it's a breach of the public trust. Yeah, that the, these people would go in there and do that. But I'm with the rest of them, but I condemn these people in the strongest terms. I believe in the Constitution. I serve the Constitution. 36 years and it broke my heart yesterday I'm sorry this is not a good way to end this no it is actually the the proper way to end this Uh, many Americans are grieving over what has taken place in the last few months uh, and what has 
what happened here in our nation's capital yesterday. Folks, we need to be in prayer. We need to be interceding for our nation, for our leaders. And, and yes, even when it looks like the, the odds are against us, the deck, the deck is stacked, we need to continue to work. And we can do that. I've seen it done before. We cannot give up. We have to continue, and we have to do it in the right way, in the right spirit, for the right purposes. There's too much at stake here, too much for our, our families, our children, and, and literally the entire world. General, I want to thank you for, uh, for your service, and I, I know that this was a, a kind, of, kind of a tough issue because I, I, just, I know that this, uh, this shook a lot of us. Uh, because we've done so much to uh, to uphold the Constitution and the freedoms that we enjoy. Thanks, Tony. And folks, I want to thank you for joining us. And again, I do encourage you to be to be in prayer. But don't lose sight of who we serve and how we're to serve Him.